What's up, y'all? It's Tracy VA checking in with Tracy VA Media, and I'm with Crash Rory. Hey, man, Crash Rory, do the dash Rory, a.k.a. the hottest on the way, man. How you feeling today? Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good, actually. You know what I'm saying? It's a good day, man. What is a day in the life for Crash Rory? Um, a day in the life, uh, I really just kind of just go with the flow of the day. It just depends on what's really, really going on. If it's, if, if I'm getting into something, like maybe I'm like going outside, making moves, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it could start off real, real early or it could start off real, real late, you know what I'm saying? But all of it, I feel like kind of just turn into music, so. How often do you be in the studio? Uh, I should record myself at the crib, nice. so. When I'm in the A, I don't really uh, be in the studio. I mainly just be at the crib recording. But when I'm like in LA or like New York or something like that, I go to the studios and I'll be out there. So I saw that you were living in LA. Did you move from there? And you're yeah. now you're living in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You want to go ahead and tell me why you left LA? Oh, um, see, LA is one of those places where it's like, I feel like it's not really a place for music. Like if you're an up and coming artist, it's not really, I feel like back when I first moved out there, it was like that, like in like 20, what was that, 2017 when I first moved out there. Um, it was like that. I feel like it was. It had a really, really good scene because it had like No Jumper and Ham on everything. No, they definitely have some good platforms. Over yeah, there. they had some really, really solid ones that people really cared about, like the people really cared about. Not saying people don't care about No Jumper and Ham on everything now. I just feel like the way music is set up now, um, the bigger platforms, like people kind of go more towards like Say Cheese and like Breakfast Club mm-hmm. and all that, you know what I'm saying? So I saw you did Dash Radio too. So you yeah. were definitely, your name has been buzzing for a while. Um, when was it and what was it when you started realizing that your day was starting to buzz around? People knew you. Um, after probably, after my song, What They Seen, um, when I first, I had a song called Southside. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of the reason why I even moved to L.A. Because I'm like, shit, man. Like, <laughs> niggas fucking with Southside to the point where it's like, maybe I should really take this rap shit serious because I was still living in Ohio. And you thought L.A. was the place to do that? Why not New York or Atlanta? So, that's funny you say that. So, the reason why I didn't do that because I feel like everybody go to the A from Ohio. Mm-hmm. Like, when they do the rap shit, they always go straight to the A. Or, you know what I'm saying, they go straight to New York. So, I'm one of the kind of people that kind of like try to draw outside the lines. Like, I try to do like different shit. So I was like, I know that nobody be going to L.A., so maybe it's some type of, like, untapped mm-hmm. type shit out there that, you know what I'm saying, niggas don't know about that maybe I could take advantage of. I feel like it's easy to get distracted out in L.A., though. Um, <laughs> yeah. What was I, it like for you out there? Like, shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll imagine, like, mansion parties, the yeah. everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So literally, literally that, you know what I'm saying, like, a lot of mansion parties, a lot of parties in the hills. Um, people didn't really go to the clubs for real. Like, it was really those mansion events or just, like, events, p- period. Like, mm-hmm. those type of, like, the shit that, like, big companies and stuff like that, like, launch events and, like, collaborative events. That's the shit that you really, really want to go to. You sound like you're just the kind of person that just always wants to be in the mix. Like, you always want to do the best, like, the biggest. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I was definitely in the mix because I felt like, I feel like it's important to, like, show face. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if you don't know my music, you don't know if I rap, you don't, you don't know nothing about me. If you keep seeing me in, like, the right places over and over again, say if my video come pop up on your on your YouTube one day or my, my page might pop up on your Instagram one day Everywhere. or even like one of my TikToks, like whatever the case may be, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you will immediately be like, man, I know this nigga from somewhere, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's almost like you like a walking advertisement. Yeah, so, so when I, I came up to you, what was your first thoughts? Were you scared? Like who the nah, hell is nah, this? No, 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 no. I was, no, 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 I wasn't scared. Um, I mean, I was like, who was this? Because, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I done lived uh, quite the life. <laughs> um, So, I'm like, damn, the, so I used to talk to her. This one so. of my old girls? <laughs> yeah, like, like, who is this? You know what I'm saying? And think about me, I got terrible memory. Anybody that know me, they know I got terrible memory. So, I'll be thing. a type one for you. Be like, hey, how you been? And I'll be like, I've been good. <laughs> you like, play it all? You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't live, I didn't live, so I didn't live in L.A. And I stayed out in New York for about eight months. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I live in the A. Um... I was out in uh, Toronto for a little while. 
Uh, I got people's on Phoenix. I was in Phoenix for a little while. So it's like I done met so many people from so many different places and been and been around so many different faces. It's like I really you really could be somebody I genuinely know. I didn't kick the wit. We didn't you know what I'm saying, did the whole whatever and I really don't remember. That's something I noticed about you, like you always moved around. Like when yeah. I was doing research on you, I'm like, damn, he over here. He with this person. How you know people in Chicago? Like what's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Chicago a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um Lone Wolf. Uh yeah, Lone Wolf. So I had tapped in for real, for real Lone Wolf kinda like um he had DM'd me a long time ago. He was a fan of my music because you I'm know what I'm saying? Because uh, Southside and shit, and uh, yeah, Southside was posted on Elevator. Mm -hmm. So Elevator is a Chicago-based platform. platform. So a lot of people thought I was from Chicago, you know what I'm saying, when I first started doing my music. So um, I had did South by Southwest mm -hmm. that year. And, um, Again, everywhere? Yeah, yeah. I was down <laughs> in Austin, Texas yeah. at South by, and I was performing. I literally, once, as soon as I got off stage, he literally approached me and was like, yeah, man, I had DM'd you about shooting a video for you, this, that, and the third. He DM'd you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is when Lone Wolf, he really didn't have like a following or nothing mm -hmm. like that. Like, he was just like a young, hungry nigga, you know what I'm saying, that was just working. So I was just like, yeah, I, I think I remember seeing your DM. He was like, yeah, I told you I was going to be out in South by. So I was just like cool like you you down to shoot a video right now yeah because i got a song and um that's when we shot what they seen mm -hmm. he shot what they seen and it's funny if you watch the video like the whole video i'm literally got the phone up to my ear because i just recorded it so i really don't even know the lyrics <laughs> i don't know the lyrics at <laughs> that all is dope as and fun. he can't even hear it because everywhere we shooting at we shooting at them loud venues and stuff down yeah. at south by so like you can't even hear None that I'm saying, none of my lyrics. I'm really got my phone up to, to my ear the whole on time. On some cheap people, like, like Gucci Mane you know type what shit. Saying? Like literally rapping, doing a song, and that ended up being one of my biggest songs. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it's crazy how that kind of like worked out for real, for real. Yes, that song is hot too. And going back to living in LA, so you're currently promoting your project. Well, an EP, Rory mm -hmm. 2, which is fire. Um, Is that how you met the producer, Raw Bone? Yeah. Yeah, I met uh, Raw Bone out in LA. I actually met him at a, a manager party. Yeah, I actually, hey, I actually was at a... Uh, better life than me. Yeah, I was actually at a, at a little mansion party in the hills, and they had, like, a studio inside the, uh, in, at the event. So I had just walked in the studio, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I wasn't really on my mingling shit. I was trying to be where the, where the rappers was, where the artists was, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I went in there, and he was just playing beats for uh for another artist. Mm -hmm. and he just like, nah, I'm cool. Nah, I'm like that. Play the next one. Nah, I'll put the next one. I'm in there just in my brain, just freestyling to everyone. Like, man, these bitches are hard. hard. But, like, Cause I haven't heard him work with a lot of people, but he did work with one of my other favorite artists, Warhol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Warhol, that's one of my peoples, too. Yeah. So, I I, ended up, I was I worked with Warhol when I first got to uh, LA, too. We had, um, did a song. I think our first song was a shit called V12. We did it uh, with Brent Rambo. He, uh, Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He a big producer out in Chicago. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's how I met Raw Bone. Damn, you everywhere. And um, yeah, and then that's how we really, really tapped in because I feel like he was like, I just like working with like young, hungry. You don't even gotta be young. You just gotta be hungry. You gotta be dedicated. You gotta be passionate about what you do. A lot of people not passionate about what they do. You and every person weird. that I worked with is just super passionate. And I need people that like I can build with. You know what I'm saying? So I help build my sound out with Raw Bone. Do you feel like you're finding people like that in Atlanta? Um, slowly but surely, yeah. You know what I'm saying? In like different ways. You feel me? Because um, I feel like Atlanta is like everybody do something or they do what you what you think you need. But like when you really tap in with them, you just kind of start realizing that a lot of them really not really who, what they is or what mm. they say they it's is. It's Camp Central, or, no, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like it'd be producers like, yeah, yeah, I'm really working. Da, 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 and then like. You were trying to set some shit up with them, and then it, it'll just be fugazi, or they'll send you some beats, and they're just like, nah, I need something more like this, and they'll be feeling like they can't even do no shit. Like, like it's just like, is we working or is we not? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't know where that comes from, but I could definitely agree with that, too. There's a lot of folks out here that do kind of pretend like they worked with this person, this person, so they could change your life, you know, but yeah. have you ever fallen for something like that? Oh. Um, I ain't, I wouldn't say I, I fell for it, but I know um, when I first got out here, it was this one dude that was trying to get me into a management contract, and mm. he said that he like was like managing like two chains, and 
he was managing all his artists and um he was just trying to like out the gate like trying to give me sign paperwork 25 percent and i'm like 25 percent like <laughs> that's all for my- what <laughs> yeah like you want 25 percent of my everything for what and like you're not even actually two chains manager like <laughs> did you research on him Is that yeah how you i used to so one of my uh peoples his name is a uh, Cavenci. he from cincinnati he was like the first person he was like really the only person i really knew in the a when i moved out here so i used to and he like one of the um he one of the part owners of Kim kirk studios so he a photographer um so I used to always just be with him at Camp Kirk Studios, just like every single day, just like, cause I feel like that was the best place for me to meet people. So he knew a lot of shit, him, Camp Kirk, um, they knew a lot. So I kind of just, you know, I did my, all my research through them. So anytime, anytime somebody out here used to be like, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, I'm this, so that I'd literally be like, you know this nigga. You, you yeah, see, you gotta you, you gotta look at the following. That's what yeah, I do. I go right. into the following and see like, okay, oh, you know, two chains is two chains following you. I mean, I get it. You know, sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, that'd be a red flag. Artists that are watching this, what is your red flags when somebody is something that they're not, or they're trying to scam you? Um, my red flags, like what's like dead giveaways? Yeah. Like, I just tell. Um, I feel like. Yeah, the Instagram can tell a lot, you know what I'm saying? And you can also tell when somebody got a bunch of fake followers, for real, for real. So, you know what I'm saying? The Instagram can definitely, definitely tell you a lot if they shit really legit. And just, um, and half the time, I really, really be knowing a lot of people that they say that they know. So, it's like, if you just really have, like, a real conversation with them, for real, for real, you can kind of get a feel that they don't even be knowing what they be talking about or they don't even do the things that they say they do. You know what I'm saying? Because... One thing I do notice, I guess this is probably saying, I could probably say my red flag is when people tell you shit straight out the gate that you didn't even ask a question about, that kind of give me a feeling. That or the name drop. Me. Yeah. I'm like, I didn't even ask drop. if you knew him. Yeah. And they kind of <laughs> give me a feeling that you don't. Cause like, I know a ton of people, a ton of people know me. Like I yes. never really get in the name dropping. I want them people that like, it's been people that I've met that was like, I didn't even know you did music. Like I've been knowing you as like just as who you are yeah. for the longest i didn't even know you did music and that's one of the reasons why i truly fuck with you and it's like because i feel like i am who i say i am i'm really me you really are you know what i'm saying and like, every time i see you, you're always at an event i've yeah. never seen you like on some casual shit yeah like i'm really me like i really try to make every day count i really try to you know what i'm saying do what makes sense you know what i'm saying so it's like every time i see you, you always got some beautiful females around you yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, who was the girlfriend? <laughs> yeah, um, no, nah, I don't got no girlfriend. Oh, but um, dang. Well, all the girls that you be having around you, I'm just like, yeah. every time I see I can't even get to you because I don't, I don't be wanting to deal with this. Yeah, no, 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 I ain't got no girl. But uh, nah, that's, I mean, I feel like that kind of became a, like a part of my brand a little bit because um, even when I was in L.A., it was like that a lot. Like, that's another thing people used to notice about me. They just be like, man, you always around. Like, mm-hmm. you always got some. But, um. I feel like that's just because it's my energy, for real, for real. Like, I feel like a lot of women pick up on me. You know what I'm saying? I'm friends. I, I have female best friends, too. So, like, I'm just real cool with a lot of women, for real, for real. And they support me. So, it's like, when I pop out, they pop out. What's what better, saying? the women in Atlanta or the women in L.A.? The women in L.A. Why? Um, Please tell me why. The women in LA, the women in LA, they just really play their role. You know what I'm saying? I know everybody hate hearing that. Like, <laughs> play, play a role, play a role. Like, yeah, before <laughs> anybody try to cancel me. You know what I'm saying? They gonna cancel you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like the women in LA play their role. And I say that, like, like in LA, if, 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 if a woman is really, like, one of them ones in LA, you know it. She know it. So you don't even have to play crazy with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, you gotta come right. You gotta step right to her. But, like, the hoes out there in L.A., the hoes a play a whole role. Like, they know they hoes. You know they a hoe. I fuck with that, so too. It's the honesty. Yeah, like, they know. So, it's like, no, we ain't got to go on no date. We ain't got to <laughs> do no extra shit. We can just, you know, get straight to it. When and I call you, you, you know what if, to do. And if, and if, or they pros. So, you got hoes and you got pros. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? L.A. got pros, yeah, too. Hard. So, then you got the ones that's like, not only is going to get straight to it, you can pay me for it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you can pay for it. We can get straight to it. And then I'm out your head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or you got this, the hoes where it's like, oh, yeah, when we see each other, we can get lit, have a good time, fuck around. But I'm going to go on with my life and you going with yours. Like, we 
we just be cool in it. You in Atlanta, just not that. No, so in Atlanta, every <laughs> woman here feel like they one of them ones. I'm talking no, about for real. From, from zero to ten. You know what I'm saying? Like they all feel they one of them ones. Like somebody could real life be a pro in Atlanta and still want you to take her out to cheetah and take her out on dates. Like you're. How a, does it feel being a guy knowing that you always got to take a girl out to even? Um, I mean. I respect it. You know what I'm saying? I respect that you feel like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? You deserve a date. You know what I'm saying? You deserve a date because women should. You should have that type of respect for yourself. But at the same time, it's like, if if I know and you know that you be out here, you know what I'm saying? Like, really playing around in these streets. Don't expect me to be the sucker ass nigga that's gonna be taking you out on dates. Like, let them other niggas do that shit. Them niggas, them niggas that don't know, cause I know. Like, <laughs> and let a small. Okay? Yeah, like I'm not taking you on no date. Like, that's, and he in the industry, y'all. Yeah, like I'm not taking you on no date. You feel me? Like, you let one of them other niggas take you on a date, and then half of them, they don't. Some of them just let a nigga fuck straight out the gate. So it's like, shit, do me like that. Just take her to Popeyes or something. You know what I'm saying? Like. Fuck me out the gate. Like, don't, <laughs> don't, like, don't try to put me on the dating cycle when you letting, you know what I'm saying? Like, Atlanta too small for that. Do me the same way. Like, why did they even try you? Anyways, uh, yeah. Oh man, shit. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, we got Crash Rari here at Tracy VA Media. He's promoting his new EP, Rari 2. Yeah. Go ahead and tell us why we should click play on that. Uh, Rari 2. So it's actually part two of Rari, of course. Drop in 2019, um, right? Yeah, 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 back in 2019. What made you want to circle back and tap back into that era? Uh, just off the strength that I fuck with Raw Bone. I fuck with my producer so hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? We really, really is like, he helped me really build out the sound that I have right now. And he really made me more confident in like the music that I do. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, knowing that I got him in my in my corner, it's like, I, I had to build something with him. And I feel like this is something that like, not only is mine, but it's also just as much as his. So it's like that's why I want to keep. I had kept the the Rari shit going just to like let people know that you know what I'm saying me and my boy we still going strong with this music shit. I'm glad you're an artist and you recognize the power of having like the producer artist duo and sticking yeah. to like this one producer. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you work with others, but it's important to build your sound that way. Yeah, yeah, nah, in fact, cause he truly know it. You know what I'm saying? Like he truly know my sound at this point. So we just been working and we gonna keep working. So before we close this out, I really want to talk about TikTok because that's how I discovered you. Mm. I feel like a lot of artists can learn from you too because you do such a good job putting yourself out there. Although it can feel a little cringy sometimes, you do what you got to do to get your music heard. So do you remember the first day that you opened the TikTok app and what was your intention? Um, First day I opened it, I was just like, I don't even know how to do this shit. Like, like where's the bitches at? Yeah, nah, it was, the bitches was on there. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, it was, he came in during the, the ass shaking era. Yeah, the- like well, <laughs> as soon as you get on there, I ain't gonna lie. TikTok, got, t- TikTok, TikTok. I'm sorry, like one of them old heads. TikTok got some of the baddest hoes on there, so I was like, that was I saw that instantly. But it was just like once you really get to looking at it, it's like everybody was doing all these like special effects and shit on there, and I'm like, I don't know how to do none of that. Like, so basically, I just had to find like something that I could do on TikTok that didn't like, I guess like. Uh, uh, go against my character, you know what I'm saying? Cause I ain't really like a like a dancer or nothing like that. Like mm-hmm. I'm funny though, you know what I'm saying? So it's like I felt like that was like kind of my lane. Like as long as I can just throw like a little funny caption up there and just like repeat the little sound, that's easy. Like and that's how I kind of figured it out. Like so, how do you feel about artists out there that say the app is corny to promote their music? Like, what is your argument with that? Because this um, helped you so much. I mean, it yeah. helped blow up RGB, mm-hmm. um, which is a song that I love, too. Also, Peachtree yeah. went viral. Yeah. What's some advice or argument you can give back to those people? Uh, I mean, shit, if you feel like it's corny, uh, I feel like the only reason I feel like... Is I can't tell somebody to not say they don't think it's corny because I get why they think that because I thought that at one point. But I feel like, if anything, just try it. Like, if you really, I, I, I advise everybody just to try to act, try to, like, put your music on there. Definitely if you independent. Like, if you independent and you ain't got nobody putting no money behind your marketing and you really trying to reach your fans and nobody, you feel like ain't nobody really listening to your music, that's truly your fault. Because you have a free app that's on your phone. You know what I'm saying? You can make little 15-second videos to your sound and the amount of money you will spend 
on an actual music video, you might spend 1500 even up to $5,000 on shooting a music video, and it might only get four or 5,000 views. You can literally get on TikTok for free, make you a little, a little, a little video to your sound, and I ain't talking about dancing. You can just repeat the sound from your, you from your song and just put a caption on it. You know what I'm saying? And that could get 400,000 views. That could get 600,000 views. Now you have 600,000 different times people didn't heard your song. And at the end of the day, that's all you really trying to do is get people to listen to your song. Open up yourself to a new audience. Yeah. And I'm glad you said the word marketing because that was my next question. Marketing wise, what did you learn from using TikTok? Um, I learned that the algorithm on there is super helpful. You know what I'm saying? They really get your music and they really help your music like touch so many different people in so many different ages. You know what I'm saying? Like I seen what it did for RGB. I feel like I got a lot more female fans um, with RGB. You know what I'm saying? Just by pushing it on TikTok. Um, so just on the marketing standpoint, it just really put your music in front of, to me, the right people. The people that are on their phones. The people that are willing to look up music and download music because a ton of people, people get their music. music. Yeah, a ton of people get their new music from TikTok. No matter if y'all want to believe that or not, a ton of the songs you hear now in the club that you ain't never heard before, a ton of the artists that you've seen that's on tour, that's on these major stages, that's getting these major looks, they songs is from TikTok. And right. you can do that organically in your house. You ain't got to get all dressed up. That's nothing like about TikTok. Like, you can come as you are on the app like you could be on there looking crazy you ain't gotta you know what i'm saying put that shit on put all your chains on and make a tiktok you can literally be in a hoodie and a do-rag <laughs> and that same tiktok can get a <laughs> million views you know what i'm saying what was your highest viewed tiktok video um it was actually one of my songs yeah i think it's that's how you do 1.3 million i was literally in my car i think with a do-rag on and a hoodie and all i did in the video was like this Caption, song. I didn't even say the words. I just looked, and then I looked over, and that was it. And that it had a caption, lit. and it had I put like a little filter on my face, and that was it. <laughs> One point three million. Yes. That helped RGB. I could look. I could watch. I was watching the Spotify numbers fly up. My shit was doing like twenty thousand, thirty thousand a day yeah. just on Spotify alone. I checked out your monthly listeners. It's up there. The numbers is definitely. Yeah. And them, them digits. And it's all to independent. I, I'm not talking about no money behind me besides my own. No major motherfucker putting nothing. No labels. No nothing. Just me and this. Thanks. It's me and this. You know what I'm saying? So. Thanks. Well, you guys, outside of me doing these interviews, you know, it's important for me to have people sitting right next to me to teach you guys some things. And this is a person that actually benefited off the app. So stop being yeah. afraid to put yourself out there and step out your comfort zone. Yeah, no, nah, facts. Facts, for sure. Well, Crash Robbie, I'm running out of time, but <laughs> I wanted to keep going because I had so many other questions. Yeah. Can you go ahead and leave us with maybe like your biggest highlight of your career so far? Uh, My biggest highlight, I'll probably say, to me, RGB. I feel like RGB is my biggest highlight only because it was, um, I feel like in a time in my career where it's like people thought it was going down mm -hmm. and... I did just get out of a deal. So at that time, it was kind of like, damn, man, like, what am I about to do? So, boom, the fact that RGB took off, TikTok helped. I actually went with my gut with it, and it did what it was supposed to do. I feel like that's big. me knowing I could do something like that on my own, by myself, let me know I can do it again, again, and again, and again. And and again. again. So, like, that's definitely one of my biggest highlights, for sure. That was so inspirational, like. That was so inspirational. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, for sure. And once again, guys, I want you to check out Rari 2 EP by Crash Rari. And once again, y'all, it's Tracy VA checking out. And thank you so much for being here, Crash. Appreciate that, man, for real. All right, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time.